Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The story of the resurrection of Christ begins in the dark. Matthew's Gospel tells us that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, we're not sure which one, went to Jesus' tomb on the first day of the week, just as dawn was breaking. And the Easter Vigil, which is the first celebration of the resurrection of Christ and takes place any time between sunset on Holy Saturday and sunrise on Easter, depending on the church tradition that you're in. The Easter Vigil begins in darkness too. I went to my first Easter Vigil in 2010 when I was living in Eastern Europe. Before that, the earliest I had ever gotten up on Easter morning was probably 6 a.m. for a sunrise service, but here I was on that chilly April morning, waking up at 2.30 in the morning and walking with my host family to our local Orthodox Church so that we could catch the last part of the Easter Vigil. Many people had already been at the church for more than two hours. We stood outside the church waiting for the priest to come out, and my memory is a little fuzzy, but what I do remember is a crowd of people huddled together trying to keep warm. Everyone had brought baskets filled with Easter bread and baked goods and eggs and produce and cheese, our, our own offerings, our own Easter feast. And we stood with lit candles as we waited for the priest to come out of the church and to announce to us, Christos an viat, Christ has risen. The experience was beautiful and moving. I'll never forget it, but it was also disconcerting because we were standing there hearing those words, Christ has risen, but it was dark. And we walked back home and it was still dark. This was a strange experience for me, a person who was used to celebrating the resurrection of Christ in broad daylight. But darkness is how the first Easter started, with the very beginnings of daylight beginning to break. When the two Marys made their way to the tomb, the sun hadn't come up yet. According to Matthew's Gospel, they went to see the tomb. Now we don't know exactly what that means. Now that Sabbath was over, were they going to keep watch to resume their vigil? It wouldn't be surprising because we know that these same women had been with Jesus on Friday watching from afar as he was crucified. And we know that they sat opposite the tomb when Joseph of Arimathea took Jesus' body, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb. But maybe the women were going expecting something. Maybe they had heard Jesus say, that he would be killed and on the third day raised from the dead. Maybe they remembered those words and so they went to the tomb that morning to see what would happen. Regardless of what they expected, it's obvious that the women got much more than they bargained for. A great earthquake, an angel descending from heaven, rolling back the stone that had been covering the entrance to Jesus' tomb and sitting on it with clothing that was dazzling white and an appearance like lightning, and guards at the tomb that were so terrified at this apocalyptic chain of events that they shook and became like dead men. And when the angel explained to the women that Jesus wasn't there, he had been raised from the dead just as he said, and showed them where his body had been, instructing them to run and to tell his disciples, the women left to do their duty, to do what had been asked of them with fear and with great joy. I wanna spend a few minutes reflecting on those words, fear and great joy. It's an unusual combination of emotions, isn't it? But that's the state that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary found themselves in. And in this same state, they encountered the risen Christ. Because as soon as they rushed from the tomb to do as the angel had instructed, Jesus suddenly appeared before them. And so they fell at his feet and worshiped him. And he said to them, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers, go to Galilee that they will see me in Galilee. Can you imagine the shock, the disbelief of hearing the angel's pronouncement and then running into Jesus before they had even had time to process what they had seen and heard. 
This is an Easter that's radically different for so many of us. For those of us who are, are, are accustomed to gathering together at church and celebrating joyfully and loudly that Christ has risen, Easter feels different this year. It feels quieter. We're isolated from the ones we love. We're faced with realities of sickness and death and uncertainty all around us. Maybe this year more than any other, we finally understand the mix of fear and joy that filled those women. We can picture them making their way in the dark because we feel like we're stumbling around in the dark too. Maybe we need to hear those same words of assurance that they needed to hear. Don't be afraid. The women at the tomb model for us a way to celebrate the resurrection in a time of fear and uncertainty. The joy that they experienced early that Sunday morning has been hard fought. They've experienced death and grief. They stood at the cross and watched as the savior that they loved was tortured and executed. They watched as his body was taken down and prepared for burial. And they spent a dark and quiet Saturday at home as the reality of Christ's death slowly started to sink in. Amidst chaos and confusion, they are indeed filled with both fear and joy. And these two women do exactly what is asked of them, and they don't waste any time in doing it. They rush to tell the disciples the good news, preaching the very first Easter sermon. Christ has been raised from the dead. We follow Christ today, and we share that same story, that same good news, because those women were faithful messengers. Because even before they saw Christ with their own eyes, they believed. Elizabeth Johnson writes this about the resurrection. For all the impressive special effects of the resurrection story, the resurrection is not merely an exercise of power on God's part. It is that, but more importantly, it is an act of love. It is an act of love on the part of God, who will not abandon Jesus to the grave and will not abandon us to sin and death and despair. This act of love is what the women saw at the tomb that morning. And it's the legacy of faith that has been passed down to us. We are people of the resurrection. The spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in us. Through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, the curse of sin and death has been broken. This is the hope we have. Our God is at work making all things new. We can't see it yet, not fully at least, but we live in hope that the promise of new life isn't just for Jesus. It's not even just for us. It's for all of God's creation. As we keep our own Easter vigil, we follow the two Marys, our excellent guides. Like them, we make our way to the tomb in darkness. We come with expectation, with fear and joy. We come to see, and we come to be surprised by what God will do. Christ is risen. Alleluia.